welcome to Urban Flower Collective. My name's Lisa and it's really great to have you here. Um, so thanks for joining me yet again. I hope you've done some of my classes before. If not, if this is your first time, then a really warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and then you'll be first to see any new um, content I put out there. So let's get on with it. So today we're going to look at these beautiful um, Alstroemeria. So these are gorgeous little cutting flowers. I grow these in my garden in the summer um, and they, they make a really nice little filler flower on their own or they look great in strands like this. Now usually they come in um, sort of branches of four or three flowers like this. Um, but as you can see, they look really lovely in a vase all together. And you can imagine these are gonna look great just on their own up the side of a, a cake, a wedding cake or a birthday cake or any kind of celebration cake. So I'm going to show you how to make these little petals, how to make the um, leaves as well and just how to take them up together to make these branches. So as I say you can use these individually if you want just in between your more um, kind of showpiece flowers, um, make great little filler flowers in a full cascade or in a um, full bouquet of sugar flowers or they look great on their own. So I'm just gonna move these aside because I'm renowned for dropping things and breaking them. So I shall put these over here and we shall get on. So we don't need too much. I mean, it's really quick. There's only um, six leaves to this, six petals to this um, flower. So we don't need much at all. But what I do have is a proper Alstroemeria cutter. Now these ones are from Tinker Tech and you can see they're absolutely tiny. If you look at my finger you know they, they look tiny and they look like they're not going to make much of a flower at all but um but as you can see they they are the and they're the exact size so i bought a bunch of alstroemeria just to make sure i was making them botanically correct and they are absolutely the right size so that's those they're from tinker tech i've also got these lovely um uh, venus so that if you can see there's two different shaped petals on here there's a fatter one and a thinner one so i've got two different venus for it these came in a set and these are from aldeval um but you know you can use whichever venus and cutters that you have if you'd like me to i can put these in um the show notes at the bottom so you can draw around and just cut out because there's only six petals to each flower it's not too much of a chore just to um make a little template out of card and cut around these with a cutting wheel or a um, exacto blade the other thing we're going to need is um, just a ruscus um, cutter or something this shape for the leaves and then we're going to need some 28 these are very tiny petals as you can see so we only need 28 gauge wire and then we're going to have some 26 gauge wire for the leaves and I like to sort of strengthen them um, when I'm taking them up with a, either a 20 or a 22 gauge we're also going to need um, some dust, so we're going to keep the paste for this white um, and I'm using my favourite ultra fine uh, modelling paste. You use whatever flower paste suits your conditions. Um, this for me is my favourite so I always use this, but you have a play around with a different paste and decide what's good for you. I've got an apple green from Fractal Colours, so you need some kind of green and you can see this is quite a pale um, green colour because the Alstroemeria I looked at had this colour and then I've got a black currant from Edible Art um, and you can see this is sort of a, a kind of ready pinky colour. I've also got some dipping solution or some rejuvenator spirit or you could use vodka um, if you prefer just for when we paint the petals at the end. I've got some stamen um, and I use, I like to get matte stamen, um, just white matte stamen, then you can colour it up any colour, but you could have coloured stamen if you like. And then I've got some um, florist tape as well for taping up at the end. Um, so I've got some white, that's half width. I've got green full width, but I can cut that in half if I need to. And I think that's about it. Oh, I've got a ball tool as well. And a, something I call a boning tool, but you can use the end of a rolling pin for this job which I shall show later on. Um, I've got a petal protector just to keep the petals moist while we're working on them. And a petal pad for just using our ball tool on. And I've also just got uh, some dimple foam because I'm going to use the back of this because I need some sponge as well. Um, and a Dresden tool. So there are all our tools. So 
I'm sure you've got those in your toolkit. I'm going to dry them on just some plastic spoons. You could use just normal dessert spoons from your kitchen if you haven't got these um, plastic spoons. I just buy these because these are easy to stack and keep in my um, flower making toolkits. So let's crack on. So I've already rolled out the paste because you don't want to watch me rolling out the paste. That's a bit boring. Um, so I've rolled it to level eight on the pasta machine. If you don't have a pasta machine, that's absolutely fine. You can roll this out by hand. Um, just make sure that you can see your fingers through it. We want this to look nice and delicate. So you can see, hopefully, that you can see my fingers through that paste. If you've got a patterned board, cutting board, you should be able to see the lines through that. Um, so that's that. Now we're gonna cut out three of each size petal. So I'm gonna start off with this larger one and I'm just gonna pop them straight into this petal protector. Now, if you don't have a, pet, a proper bespoke petal protector, you can use just a polythene document wallet and it does exactly the same job. So don't worry. So let's get some good cuts here. I like metal cutters best because they always give a better cut, I find. So we need three of those and three of the smaller ones. Now this is very small, so I'm just going to pop that out in my dressing tool. One, two, three. Now I'm going to keep this paste because I'm going to use that later on. Now, next thing, let's move these wires out of the way. What I want to do is just thin these out a little bit more so they don't look just freshly cut. We need to make them as thin and delicate as possible. So I'm going to take this tool, which is a boning tool. This is used for crafts. It's um, used, you can get these really cheaply on Amazon in packs of two. They come in a pack of two like this if you're looking for them. And they're about three pounds in the English money. So um, they're not much at all, um, but it's really handy. You could use, I've got lots of sort of crafting tools from my Cricut um, machine, or you can also use the end of a rolling pin to do the same thing, um, or a cell pin, or a, a, um, any kind of plastic dowel, but I find this works. And what I'm gonna do is just thin the, this top edge out and just fatten out the petal a tiny bit. So I'll do one and you can see, you can see the difference in the sizes of those. Let me lift the flap up so that it, it's not reflecting so much. So you can see that gets fatter and thinner. Now you need to do this between two pieces of plastic of some point. So if you haven't got one of these, a document wallet will do the same thing. Just um, so it doesn't stick basically. Um, so you can see I'm just fattening these out compared to that one. And I don't want to feel a ridge along these ends because I want these flowers to be really, really delicate because they're so small. So that's that. Now next I'm going to take my 26 gauge wire. Now I've mixed it up so I'm going to have to feel if that feels the thinnest. Yeah, sorry. Now I'm going to take my 28 gauge wire. Now that's as much as we... Um, that's as thick as we need it for this because these are very thin. I'm going to take it, cut it in the middle and cut it into six pieces because we don't need these to be very long and we don't want to waste our wire. So cut them into six and that should do our full thing. Now, if you've done my classes before, you know that I do the cheats method of getting your wire on so you're not poking the wire through. I don't do them on a main and board. I use this method where I put a tiny bit of paste on the end. So all, what I'm gonna do is take the tiniest piece of um, flower paste. This needs to be pretty sticky for this. So if your flower paste's been out, it's a little bit dry, get some fresh and use some fresh, otherwise it won't work. And I'm just gonna twirl it onto the end, about a centimeter, very thin. Now, if you're not very fast at this, you can just do one at a time. I'm going to do three here and then do the other three. So that's one, two, and three. So as I say, this really needs to be sticky to make this work. Take away any excess. If you feel it's not thin enough, just give it a little roll. 
And then we're going to take over our veiner. So I'm going to start with the bigger leaves first, the fatter leaves. So I'm taking this fat veiner. Now the veiner has um, a, like a channel on one side and like a more of a hump on the other. So that is the bottom of the veiner and that is the top. So I'm going to take out my three fat petals here. One, two and three. I shall move this out of the way. And what I'm going to do is pop, or to do it this way, I'm going to just pop that on the back of the petal. Just make sure the end of where your um, flower paste ends on the wire goes to the end of the petal. I'm going to place it in the veiner. Make sure that your wire is in the channel of the petal, then your veins are going to be in the right place. I'm going to place the top bit on top and just press down. Give it a good press. And you can see that attaches that beautifully. So I'm going to do the same for all three. Now I think I've had a bit of green petal dust on my fingers so the paste looks a different colour. So make sure your hands are scrupulously clean. I thought they were before you start doing this. You can see that one's stuck on. And on to the last one. Two, three. Great. Now I'm going to bring over my petal pad. So this is more of a firm foam if you haven't used these before and I'm just going to pop this on. Ignore the holes, we don't need the holes for this flower. I'm just going to remove that excess paste. Um, and then take my small ball tools, so you probably all have a set of these ball tools. This is quite a small one. I'm just going to run around the edge of this petal just to give it a little bit of a frill and give it a little bit of movement. Um, it's already very fine, so we're not doing this to thin it out, we're just doing this to give it a little bit of movement. Um, so if you haven't used a ball tool before, you put it half on the pad and half on the petal. Just press fairly firmly. With this ultra fine paste, it doesn't rip, it's pretty robust. So we've just given that a nice bit of a frill. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to bring over the dimple sponge. I'm going to use the back of that. I'm going to put all three on there. And what I want to do is just accentuate this crease in the front. So I'm using the pointy end of my dressing tool and just going down like so on the front. Then I'm going to flip it over because these petals just curl back a little bit. And I'm just going to roll this pointy end of the Dresden tool around the, the sides and you can see it's just giving it a nice little shape. Now what I'm going to do is pop it on a spoon with this little edge hanging over. Actually I might even do it this way on the spoon. I just want it to have a little bit of a curve at the base here but I want this bit to hang over like so. Now if you didn't have any, I'm sure you've all got spoons in your kitchen so you can use that. If not, you could just roll up a little bit of foil perhaps, um, just to, like so, just for it to hang over. I'll do it with this one. So I've done a crease at the front, I'm just going to bend these two sides back a little bit. So just run around the edge and then you could hang it over this foil, like so. have the same effect. I'm just going to do it on the spoon just so I get a nice curve. So these are tiny, tiny little petals as you can see, um, but they're really cute. So the last one, just run round the very edge with a Dresden tool just so it turns back a little bit. And I'm going to just take my spoon and just let it hang over and give it a little bit of shape. Right, next we're going to do the same with these. I'm going to get some new paste out, I think. I'm not liking that one. So 
So just the tiniest, tiniest amount of paste. And we're gonna pop it onto the ends of these wires. So one. and three so these are great on wedding cakes you know if you if you're doing some statement flowers you know if you're doing your david austin rolls or you're doing ranunculus and you just want something to fill the little gaps these are great on their own um but as you can see they look fabulous on a whole branch um, they make a, quite a statement just on their own so go and have fun with them and the, the beauty of these is they come in so many colors so there's some gorgeous red ones and um, they're yellow so you can you can make them whatever color to suit your cake right so we're taking oops wrong veiner so we're taking the smaller veiner now and again look for the channel because that's the back the one with the bump is the front and I'm just going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to place the end of the petal at the end of where I've put the paste on my wire. I'm going to pop the wire into the channel and I'm going to press down to get these veins and attach. So there we go. Same for the second. you get up straight it's not very big so now I'm going to bring back my petal pad and we're going to just roll the ball tool around the edges of these as well Now I've found with these, if I just hang them over the edge of this petal pad, they get the curve that I want. So if you can see, I'm just, just the very edge, probably where the wire stops, I'm going to let them hang and they'll dry in that shape because these curve over a little bit more. So that's that. I'm going to leave these to dry and I'm going to show you how to make the centre. So for the center, we need some stamen. Um, and we only need two of these because the usually, the ones I was looking at and the ones I used for inspiration had four stamen in the middle. So again, taking some 26 gauge wire, you don't need much of this. We're just gonna put it in the middle. So I'm gonna take these stamen, I'm gonna put this wire in the middle and I'm gonna fold it over. So they're all at the same height. I'm going to take this wire and fold it over like so and twist. Just to keep those secure. And then I'm going to just take some white florist tape. Now if you haven't used florist tape before, you have to just give it a little stretch to activate the glue. And it's a little bit fiddly, but we're just going to run it up and down this wire just to make those secure and make them stand up. So there are stamen for the centre. Now in the example let me just bring it back over. The example I looked at um, they've got this kind of darker green, well a, a, a green centre basically. Um, so we're going to have to paint the stain in that colour, so we can use dusts for that. So what I have is, I'm going to just bring a piece of parchment over so I don't get everything dirty. I've got this green apple colour. Now you can use any colour you want. Look at, look at pictures on the internet for inspiration and see what colour suits you. 
and we can just dust this off. If you want, you can put a little bit of rejuvenator spirit into there and make it into a paint and it will go on a little bit better. So, if you don't have rejuvenator spirit, you can look for dipping solution or you can use vodka. You don't want water, you want something that's going to evaporate really, really quickly when you're painting um, sugar flowers. It doesn't matter so much for the stamen, but for the sugar flowers, you definitely need something that will evaporate and just leave the dust. So that's our center done. That's our stamen. Nice, so I shall put them over to one side and leave it at that. So while I'm waiting for these um, to dry, I'm gonna make a few more and then I can show you how to wire it up at the end and attach it and make the whole branch. So I shall be back soon. Hi, welcome back. So now I've got all my petals cut out. I've made up a couple of other alstrom areas and I'm gonna show you how to dust these up and tape them together. So let's get going. So these should all be nice and dry now. These, these have been left probably about 20 minutes to maybe half an hour. Um, and they're, they're firm enough to be able to dust up. Um, they're holding their shape quite nicely. Um, and so are the small ones. So they're all ready to go. So I'm going to remove them from this pad. Hopefully you can see that okay. So we've got our six petals. What I'm going to do is just bring over some um, parchment paper actually so I don't make a mess of everything. Um, I've been dusting the others on this so it is a little bit dirty to start with. And I've got my dusts here. I've got green apple by Fractal Colours and that's what we did this stamen with. And I've also got Edible Art Blackberry which is a nice sort of burgundy pinky colour. Um, but you can use whichever colours, whichever brand you prefer. Just look at the um, look at the example that you're using, you know, whether it be the internet or a real plant in front of you, and just copy those colours. So I'm just going to take a, a little brush that I use for dusting with, and you can use paint brushes, you can make, use makeup brushes, but just keep them for dust. Don't use them for anything else, obviously. And all I'm going to do is take a little bit now. Remember, with dust, less is more. So you can't take it away, but you can add to it. So I try and just tap on the paper, make sure your brush isn't too overloaded. And we're just gonna gently brush down that central crease in this flower. And we're gonna do the same on the back because you will see a little bit of the backs of these flowers. We're just gonna blend it in a little bit, like so. So we're gonna do that for all of the big ones. So the, the larger leaves, the fatter leaves, we're going to do that for. So gently brush down and on the back as well. And the last one, number three. Just gently down and on the back. So as you can see, these are really quick to make and they make um, really nice little flowers. And then we're going to do pretty much the same, so just brushing down the, the middle of the um, smaller one as well. Not much at all, we don't need much, it needs to be very, very faint if you're going to go for the same colour scheme as I've gone for. But look on the internet, look on Pinterest, look at gardening books, look in your garden for inspiration. You, as I say, these come in lots of different colours, so um, I've had yellow ones, I've had red ones in my garden. Um, but I really like these white ones because they look really nice on wedding cakes. Um, like they, are, they just add a tiny little splash of colour if you've got an all white bouquet or an all white cluster on your cake. So we've got that green all the way down on both. Next, we're going to use our blackberry. Now, definitely with this, less is more. So what I've got here is a tiny, you can see, a tiny, tiny little brush. And these brushes are used for nail art. You can find them on the internet, on Amazon or whatever, for nail art. If it's not tiny enough, you can always give it another, a little bit of a trim with your scissors to make it a really fine point. Now these flowers, if you've looked at them, they look like someone's actually painted them. 
the, they do look like they've been just splodged with a little bit of paint they've got little lines on them so that's what we're going to try and replicate here so you do need some kind of solution so i've got rejuvenate the spirit here as i say dipping solution or even vodka would do but something that's going to evaporate something with a high al alcohol content don't worry the alcohol all evaporates and you're only left with the dust um, so again, less is more. I'm just going to test this out on the paper. And oops, wrong one. And using just the fat, just taking the three fat, there's no dots on the small ones. Using the three fat ones, you're just going to be as gentle as you can. And you're just going to paint some little lines on this, like so. The finer, the better. Sometimes it can look a bit clumpy. Um, but it, when you look at a real Alstrom area, they actually look like someone's just painted them on with a paintbrush. So that's the kind of thing we're looking for. So we're going to do that for all three. So just be patient. I'm just going fairly quickly here because I just want to get you the demo done. But you, if you've got more time, you take your time. See, I've gone too thick there, but it, it doesn't matter. Once they're taped up, it'll look fine. So just all the way up these three petals. So I'm hardly touching it. I'm just kind of flicking it with the brush. You need some more fluid in there. Just add it in. No plants are symmetrical, so don't worry about that. The next thing I'm going to do is just add, just put a little bit of the dry powder on the side here. Again, less is more. I've hardly got any on this dry brush. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of pink along the edges of one or two of the petals, not all of them. But just some of them on the, the flower I had, just had a little bit of a rosy glow around the edge of some of these petals. So I'm just hard, I'm not touching it, I'm just kind of, if you can see, just tapping the edge just to give it a tiny little bit of pink on there. Um, and maybe just on one side of this one, maybe just on the tip of this one. Try not to break the tip off. These are very fragile because we've rolled them out so thin. And then it's the same, maybe just on a couple of these edges as well. Not everywhere, just on one or two little edges. And again on this one. Oh, gone to see, less is more, gone too much on there, but don't worry. Right, so now it's time to tape up. So we're going to bring back our centre that we did, our stamen. Let me move all this out of the way. Let me move this messy paper out of the way. Now for this, we're going to need some more florist tape. You don't need um, thick florist tape. So this is just full width florist tape. What I do is take the full width and I just cut it down the middle because these flowers are so tiny you don't want big bulky tape on the um, wires so I'm just going to cut that in half you can get tools for this but you can do it easily with a pair of scissors so there we go I'm going to use that and what I'm going to do is take my centre where did I put it just had it in my hand can't see it everything's green oh it's had under the petals so I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to start with these smaller petals. Now I'm just going to hold it right at the very base here and I'm just going to bend that wire back a little bit. Not too much but they are the middle ones kind of open up. And I'm going to place the stamen in the middle. And I want the stamen to come up quite high because they do come up quite high in this flower. So if you can see where I've got it, yeah. And then I'm going to start to tape. So remember, give it a stretch, pull it as you go, and it sticks on itself, this florist tape. So we're going to start taping. So we want one, and then we're going to do the same with the second one, just bend it back a little bit, pop it on at the same height, and secure that on. You can move these around a little bit if they're not quite in the right place, once you've got them in position. 
and then the third on the top of the haven. So I want them just to be equally spaced out, as you can see. So I'm going to take that tape all the way down to the bottom so it doesn't get too bulky at the head. And then we're going to do the same with the next three. So bend it back at the base and put it in the gap, the gap that we've got in between the smaller petals. So it's going to go behind the smaller petals, but in the gap, if you can see. So that's one. Bend the second one back. So I can see, move these around a little bit once we've got them taped on, if you don't like where they're placed. Two. And three. So I'm going to go all the way up to the top and all the way down to cover all those wires. So, so you can just manipulate these petals around a little bit. You can have them in as tight, you know, some of, sometimes they're a bit more closed, sometimes they're a bit more open. So you alternate how you want them. If you're going to have these in a bunch, have a few a bit more open, a few a bit more closed. So that's our little Alstrom area. It looks really cute, doesn't it? Um, so that's that. Now we've got to finish this off. So what I'm going to do is pop it on a bit of a thicker wire to start with. I've got some, I think this is 22 gauge wire. So I'm just going to add that on here. I'm just going to use full thickness tape for this because it will be quicker. So I'm going to pop that on there. Just tape that down. So then that's attached to a long wire. Now we need to make some leaves and I want to put a little calyx, not quite a calyx but like a little bud on the back. It, it finishes it off and that's what the real ones look like. So I'm just going to pop that down and I'm going to bring over my foliage green. This is already coloured. You could just use white and fill it up with some green yourself. But this is just easy to use. So I shall get that out of the packet. Now I'm just going to take hardly about a pea, not even a pea, a tiny pea, a petit pois size ball. I'm just going to roll that into a ball and what I'm going to do, you can do this before you put the long wire on if you want, if it's easier. I'm just going to slide that up here and I'm just going to squeeze it round, maybe take off any excess if there is any and just squeeze squeeze it round on this flower to make a little bud. I'm going to take the Dresden tool which is here somewhere and just, oh well, I'll just use my finger actually because I can't see the Dresden tool. I'm just going to bring it down. Now I've got some darker green here, which is the same colour as the, um, this is Magic Colours Forest Green, any dark green, a racing green would do. And I'm just going to dust that to make it the same colour as the tape I've used. You could use white paste and just dust it up, as I say, or colour it up. So that just adds on that little kind of calyxy bud and finishes that off a little bit so it doesn't look so untidy. Right, so I'm going to stick this to one side and I'm going to show you how to make the leaves. Um, I've made a few already so you don't have to watch me making them all, but I've just got this ready um, coloured green. The leaves don't have to be quite as fine as the petals, so that's good. You don't have to have them really fine because they, they do tend to snap sometimes because they stick out a bit more if they're on a cake. I'm just going to roll this by hand rather than use the pasta machine. Um, so if you're using a pasta machine, I'd probably take it to about level six or seven on there. You don't need to be seen through this paste. 
So that should do, I think. As I said, I've made some already, so I'm just going to show you one here. So this is a Ruskus cutter. You could use anything that's this shape, maybe a Dahlia cutter would do, or you can just cut it out. I shall put a template in the show notes so you can cut that out. Again, we're going to use the same kind of method as we've used for the petals. So we're just going to thin this out a little bit. Um, but first of all, I'm going to take a piece of 20, I think I'm using 26 gauge wire for the leaves. Again, we don't need it too thick um, because they're not very heavy, they're very small leaves. So I'm going to pop, I'm just putting it on this blue pad so you can see the difference, you can't really see it on the green board. Just going to roll this onto some wire. So I've just popped a little bit of flower paste on the wire, take off any excess. And this time, the, if you look at um, Alstroemeria leaves, they've, they've got sort of lines in them. So any kind of vein that's got lines in them. Rather than bring a proper leaf vein out, I've just brought a universal petal vein just to show you that things can be adapted. So this has just got some nice leaves in. I'm just going to use that. So the leaf goes, the bottom of the leaf goes to the bottom of where we've put the um, flower paste on the, on the stem. Cover it over and we're just going to press down. And there you go, we've got nice Hopefully you can see you've got nice lines in those in that leaf. I'm going to pop it on the petal pad. I'm just going to give it a little roll with the um, ball tool just to give it a little bit of movement so it doesn't look freshly cut, you know, make it look a little bit more natural. And then I just dry them on a pad. So you can have them you can have lumps and bumps in them. They are quite, they do have quite a bit of movement in them, these petals. You can hang it over the edge. You can have it turned up over. It's up to you. So just dry it on a, on a pad, a dimple pad like this, or on some scrunched up tin foil, some scrunched up aluminium foil, some scrunched up paper, um, and they should dry nicely. So I've got that to one side. I've done some earlier. Um, that are already dry. I'm just going to show you how I dust these up. So they don't take much dusting at all, but we want to give, make them look a little bit more natural, a bit more lifelike. So I'm going to, let me bring some paper over so you can see. Um, I'm going to take this dark racing green again, or what's it called, forest green. And I'm just going to dust up from the base. And what happens here is that the, the, Petal dust goes into those lovely creases that we've done with the vein, and it just gives the leaf a little bit more movement, gives it makes it look a little bit more realistic, and gives it a little bit more interest, really. So there are petals. So that's all there is to that. That I've made four because I'm going to put three of these together on a branch. So let's bring back over our, um, our flower. So these flowers, if you look at the, the real thing, they come, let me show you, here's a three that I've made already. Each flower usually has one leaf on it, and then, or maybe two, and then they all join together into one branch. So you can see there, so I've got three all going into one branch, and that's how they are. They come in threes and fours like that. So I'll show you how we do that. So we've got our longest stem. So what I'm going to do first of all is I don't like to see, you could use green. If you've got 26 gauge wire, you could use green wire for this if you want. But I always like to cover up my wires, particularly if you're going to enter competitions, you always need to cover your wires with florist tape. So I'm just going to put some florist tape up this so it looks green and it matches the flower. Like that. So that's three and four. You don't need to go all the way down this wire because it's going to get covered when we attach it to the main stem. 
Right, so I'm going to start with this little flower that we've already taped up and I'm just going to add a leaf onto that. Let's get some more tape. So this can be sticking out as much as you want, it, you know, can have as much movement as you like. Now I'm going to do the same again for this one. If you notice, I've forgotten to put the ends on there. So hang on, I'm just going to pop a little bit of green around there to finish that off because it doesn't look finished. And the same with the other one, I just dust them up. So they're on there. So let's do our next one. I'm going to tape it onto a longer piece again. It doesn't need to be quite so long this time. Um, uh, so it's just one of the branches off the main stem. But I'm going to tape that on like so and then pop on a leaf. Like that. And then our final one. I'm going to use that one. Yep. So I'm going to pop it on the stem. It's my forest tape. Pop our leaf on. And then we're going to start joining these. So they branch out a little bit from the main stem. So put them at different heights so they don't clash together because if the, if the petals clash together, they're very, very fine and they will break. And I'm going to put one just a little bit further down. Like that. And then I'm going to put on my final petal. That one's going upwards. Just going to tape all the way down to the bottom. You could add extra petals on further down this stem if you want, but if you're going to put them in a vase, then you might not want to do that. Um, so there we go. Let me just arrange these a little bit. You can bend the heads to face the front if you want. So that is our little um, branch of Alstroemeria. Pretty easy to make, pretty quick to make. If I bring over the two branches I've already made, if we add this in, then that looks really pretty. Looks quite realistic. Um, let's see up here. You know, you've got a really nice big bunch of these now. And they're dead dead easy to make so I'm going to put these in a vase because I don't have any at the moment got none in the garden none to pick I'm going to give them a little bit more of an arrange 
But that is our Alstroemeria tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll be first to see all the new videos. If you want some support with your cake business, then come and join us at Urban Cake Collective. And um, we've also got a support group. So if you're struggling with any of these techniques, then please come over to the private Facebook group called Urban Flower Collective. Just request to join and I shall let you in if you tell me you've done one of the um, online tutorials. So thank you for watching again. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please tag me if you make any of these flowers. I'd love to see what you're making and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.